Okay, I think we're good now. Um, I showed us going to the yeah, yeah. Where are group, but not I here yet. It. I can see it. Oh, yeah, here we are. All right, y'all, sorry about that. API demons. API demons out of our hands. They don't give you, they don't give you a heads up when that stuff's not working and you only find out when you're actually trying to make it work. It's amazing. So, it's like, even if they just were like, hey, here's an update we did. You check this, no. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, all right, everybody. So let's just get right into it. Uh, today, we're going to talk about self-sabotage. And uh, if you're in the chat box, you want to say hi, please feel free. We'll welcome you in. But since we're getting started here uh, late. Lots just... of link for them for um, yeah doing their name thing. Yeah. Well, that's hard for me to do it. I'm giving the intro, so I'll do it after. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to talk about self-sabotage today. And, you know, if you are guilty, what's up, Mary? It's good to see you, sweetheart. Oh, Mary. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, if you are anything like me or any other human I've ever coached, then we all have our self-sabotage tendencies. Uh, we, every other week before we get on this call, we do a wrap-up call with um, our coaches. So if you're in, in any of our programs, in, in really all of them, you, you, we have people facilitating um, coaching kind of one-on-one -on -one or in group settings to help people just understand these concepts because concepts are conceptual, but we really want to embody these teachings. Like how do we bring transformation into our lives every day? How do we actually look at, okay, I'm, I'm having a moment here today how do I assess this? You know, am I going to assess it from intellect, which is what Elon and I did for most of our lives, right? Like, okay, how do I figure out, how do I strategize, how do I game plan? Um, maybe there's a deeper layer, like the feelings, maybe there's a connection thing that's happening. Maybe there's a part of your system that's feeling under-resourced, right? And so when we don't understand these different aspects of really what's going on in our system, because, you know, Here's, here's the reality. The human system is very complex, okay? Like for whatever you think of medical science or where we are in psychology, things of that nature, like medical science doesn't really know what's going on. I'll give you an example. Uh, when they anesthetize people for surgeries, we don't actually understand why how a anesthesiology works. Like we don't, we know it works. We don't actually know why it works. Uh, same thing when it comes to electricity. We know it works. We actually don't know like the actual physical properties of electricity. Like we don't actually fully understand that. We don't fully understand gravity, right? And so while we may live in a world where we think we have these like broad conceptual ideas and good understandings of it, here's the truth, we don't. And the human system is extremely complex, right? Like evolution, if you wanna think of it this way, basically biological systems becoming more and more complex, you know, and we have man and we'll continue to evolve into more complex machinery. In fact, we are evolving and creating more complex machinery, right? Through, through our intellect and through our imagination. So when we're looking at the, the human system, first of all, how many of you guys deal with self-sabotage? You know, just say I in the chat box, if that's like a regular occurrence for you. And it's like, you know, I, I, I'm gonna check I, 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 all the eyes. You know? Yeah, all the eyes. And and it might be, and it doesn't always have to be a big thing, like a big loss of money or a relationship. It could be rather subtle. Like I woke up um, this morning and uh, feeling a lot of anxiety in my system, where I've kind of learned this as a way I process. And here, here's the other thing I learned when I'm anxious, like I'm a bit of a dick. That's just, you know, like I'm, I'm I, I have uh, a lot less room for being triggered. So if I am around my son or around my wife and it's not like a copious environment for like peacefulness when that's happening in my system like i just get so much more triggered by things that would normally i would be extremely loving about but why because i'm really inundated with that what's happening in my system and then there's still life going on you know i gotta cook breakfast i gotta take care of the day-to-day -day things like all that's happening and of course all i want to do in that moment is like sit and breathe right so 
and and that in a way is like i'm sabotaging this relationship right now because what i really want is connection with this person but i'm so enamored by what's happening inside of my center channel and what my mind is doing that like i'm 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 not really present it's it's can be even hard for me to follow conversation when this is happening i feel kind of disassociated when this is happening and so I'm just using this as an example because there's like a whole world of stuff that's happening when we're sabotaging ourselves. But often when we're, we are doing that, what we're just seeing is the end result of the end product, which is like, that didn't work out. Right. And many of us, by the way, won't even, uh, will say like, okay, I'm responsible for what happened. It's like, no, that's not self sabotage it's They sabotage this or life is unfair, or God doesn't love me, or, you know, like this always happens to me or whatever it might be. And so, and now you're even farther away from actually seeing the truth because you're, you don't feel like you have any responsibility or say in what's occurred. You know, maybe you're not in a place right now in your personal evolution where you've learned that the answer is to look within, not to keep trying to fix what's out here. And so that's kind of the crux of what we want to talk about today is like, what are the strategies that we can understand and then also embody and the different layers in which we want to start viewing our system and really learning how to not uh, fix what's happening. Because what's really important that, that you guys understand or what you guys start to begin to understand and play with is that your system is highly intelligent. Okay. Like if you want to think of it this way, you have a, a uh, an objective mind. This is your conscious mind. And it's, I think it's much more useful to think of the subconscious as the this area here behind the stomach, which is the solar plexus area. Plexus literally means like the, the gathering of nerves and veins and like everything that puts your nervous system together, right? And kind of all comes together here and, and it builds out from the spinal cord, of course, and, and all the different aspects of the nervous system. But this part, this part basically functions one way. It's very literal and it works on habituation right this part kind of guards this part and is the one creating the habits but this part of you right this just like your uh, this this subconscious part of you the subjective part of you that's always making blood flow in your veins is carrying nutrition is doing a million and one things underneath your consciousness is also never sleeping and as a constant emission of energy output that it's putting on like frequencies right that it's that is putting out into the world and your reality is a match for the frequency this is outputting. And so we want to get really, really, really curious about how these two mechanisms placate together. And then how through our awareness and enhancing conscious awareness, we can facilitate changes that we want in the subconscious and the solar plexus and you know the, our, our nervous system neurology and its intelligence to actually information to this part of ourselves to, to guide the experience that we want to have. Because whatever energy this is emitting is the reality that you're living in. Is a, you know, we call reality an organic hologram, basically, that's reflecting the energy output of this subconscious part of you. And so many of us, when we're experiencing some kind of sabotage in our lives, and Elon's going to give you guys a little a deeper layering here in just a moment, but when many of us are experiencing this, we drive our awareness up to our conscious mind, which is all this conditioning that we've been given, right, by society and family and friends and TVs and books and what they told you you're supposed to be, what you're not supposed to be, how you're supposed to act, how you're not supposed to act. And through that, you've habituated this subconscious, right? But when we just go up here and we drive all our awareness up here to solve the problems, right, that we're having, this self-sabotage that we're experiencing, then we get trapped in this world and we never actually change anything about these much deeper aspects of ourselves that are much more influential over the life that you're having than, the, than what you think. Like you think it's this is influencing it. Yeah, it is, but it's really influencing this, which is really influencing this out here, right? And so Elon's going to take you guys through kind of these, uh, this mechanism through which to look at it. But what I really want to bring home at the end of all this is like your system is wildly intelligent and nothing changes until you start honoring the intelligence of this system as it is in its current state right now okay so it's like you are angry or you are frustrated or you are anxious like i am 
uh, this morning. And if you're like, I don't want to be anxious. Well, how does that, like, if you're an anxious person like me, say I, and then realize like when you're like, I don't want to be anxious, like doesn't make the anxiety go away, like amplifies the anxiety, right? As you like fight against the experience that you're having. However, if I switch it and I'm like, wow, look at this intelligent system, like the anxiety is trying to protect my system from something. And I begin by honoring, like what, what is the system trying to tell me right now? Like, what is it actually experiencing? Why is the anxiety arising to protect me? And if I could see that, I can kind of relax my system, relax my body, relax my mind, and start letting the energy that's trying to flow, right? That's kind of the anxiety feels like a buildup of energy. And it's like too much in the system. I can start letting it flow. And it feels like right now it's flowing through the front of my heart a little bit and kind of out here. And it is causing me to disassociate a little bit. But if I can let that just be the the, in, the system knows what it's doing and how to dissipate the energy. When I'm using my intellect to try to change the experience that I'm having, I'm actually blocking this flow. And so I actually get stuck in this experience much, much longer. And so, yeah, I'll turn it to Elon and he'll kind of explain these three layers to you. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll keep going with the conversation for now. I, I want to offer something else in here <clears throat> because as you were talking, it just kind of came to me. When you think of self-sabotage, I want to just re kind of jigger this in your mind. It's not really self-sabotage. It's kind of what guy was talking about right now. Our system is very intelligent, right? So if you think like, well, this intelligent system, why would it be sabotaging me all the time? And there's kind of like a misnomer there. It's not really self-sabotage. It's more self-preservation. Meaning that something like, like if you think about in a car and you're driving and you hit the red line, doesn't happen so much today in automatic cars, but back when you can drive manuals and you can just rev out the engine, then the car will actually do something like it will cut the gas or it will uh, limit your ability to push the throttle. Like something will happen so that you can't keep bouncing off that red limiter, red, red line limiter. And our bodies are very intelligent and, and they do very, very similar things. And a lot of why it creates the self-preservation is I'm going to walk you through a process is because there's certain aspects of ourselves that through different traumas and then through habituated practices and through certain perceptions keep arising over and over and over. Um, and I just want to give you like a few of these. There's four. I actually magically found this piece of paper, which... I haven't used in a long time, but I had some great notes from a book. I believe it was called, I think this is from a book called Big Leap. I might be wrong, uh, but I think it's from there. And he was discussing four beliefs that trigger our, you know, like our upper, he called it upper limits, but like that red line that we're talking about, right? So the first one is <clears throat> that I'm fundamentally flawed, meaning that um, I'm bad, good things can't happen to me, things like that. So anytime something happens in your life that will trigger that, this self-sabotage, self-preservation mechanism is going to kick in, okay? Two is if I succeed, I will leave others behind. So people that I love, people that I will leave them behind and there's this feeling of like... Uh, I'm not being loyal to where I came from. I'm not being loyal to my family. Okay, so that's two. And you can kind of, as I'm sharing these, <clears throat> if you in the comment box can say like, yes, that's me. Because we we all fall into one or two of these categories that kick off quite a bit. Okay, so the first one's fundamentally flawed. The second one's if I succeed, I'll leave. So just let us know if those resonate. Third one is I'm a burden. Right. So I don't want to be a burden for others. So if my success or my doing acts will somehow burden others, that doesn't work for me. And the fourth and final one that he mentions, which might resonate with many of you, is um, I can't shine too bright. Meaning that, like, 
I can't shine brighter than others, so I need to somehow dim my light. So again, just to repeat, uh, fundamentally flawed. If I succeed, uh, I'll leave others behind. Three is I'm going to be a burden. And four is I can't shine too bright. I have hat trick, Susan says. <laughs> All of the above. Yeah, right? And you can just kind of like start to see that obviously if this was a program that you had inside – the system gets overcharged, something happens, it's going to hit off of that, it's going to trigger one of these, and then you're going to start to create a way to lose everything that you created. Because what we can't be, we can't be with this. So first steps first is just to realize like it's not actual self-sabotage, it's self-preservation. Now what is it that it's preserving? That's the key. Like, what, what is it that we're trying to preserve? What is it? And it's this feeling of if it's too good, it has to fall down. It's this, you know, the fundamental, like all these things get triggered. So one of the practices we take people through, it's, it's a simple three-step process. And the first step is there's a hard emotion and a hard emotion can be like, um, I'm angry, I'm frustrated, I'm mad, I'm disappointed. Like, like there's, it's like a hard emotion, right? These hard emotions usually are triggered by what comes below that, which is there's a perception, a story, uh, a thing that we have told ourselves about ourselves, about the situation, about reality. And then underneath that is what we're really, really interested in. And underneath that is the soft emotion. And the soft emotion is the hurt little one. This might be the one that uh, is really sad or feels really alone, or really scared, or that you're going to leave him or her. And it's this part that this self-sabotage is actually preserving. It's, it's this little part, this little hurt boy or girl inside of us that's really uh, needs all of this mechanism and protection because when this part got created... There was so much trauma and so much pain or sadness or fear, like like terror level of fear that occurred that our system wired itself in a way to make sure that we never experience that again. And so every time something comes even close to touching that, Right. So if, if say you, you were wildly successful in business, let's just use this example. Right. And all of a sudden your business really, really started to grow. But deep down inside, you had this feeling that if I shine really bright, right, it's going to really upset people. Or if I become too successful, I'm not going to be loyal to my family because I'm going to feel like I'm going to leave them behind. That little boy or girl that's inside that's afraid of being alone, that's afraid of not being good enough, that's afraid of everything, right? Like that little boy or girl is what's going to be triggered if that thing were to happen. Like if you really were to be disloyal to your family, could you see how that is going to trigger something inside of you? Maybe you have an abandonment issue or something like that. And you're like, I never want to feel that again, ever. And so you'll never let yourself go past this thing because your mind has told you a story, a perception that if you do this and this and this and this and this is going to happen. And so in order to protect this, this is what kind of comes online. And so it's what where a lot of people get stuck is they get stuck in the world of the perception of the story. And they try to lie to themselves, in essence, and go, 
No, it's not. You know, uh, success is good for me. If I have money, I'm not really going to lose my family. And you try to convince yourself of all these things at, at level here. But the little part that's in here, freaking out, doesn't care what you try to convince your brain of. It's still freaking out. And that's why people keep bouncing off of these, these uh, glass ceilings all the time. Because you hit it, it triggers the part. You try to tell yourself something really profound that you read in some book that's like, no, 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 if I just reframe it this way, or if I just believe this with all my might, or if I just visualize, or if I just sit there and hope and ho-hum and pray and blah, 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 like eventually I'll get through it, but you won't. The body doesn't care. The body doesn't care. It is just self-preservation because internally this part truly believes that if you were to hit that million dollar a month goal they're all gonna leave and you will be on your own in that same horrible painful fashion that you were when you were three or four years old and the mind cannot let you go there and so what we work with people on so that they can crush these goals with effortless ease is like, imagine if there was nothing to protect. Imagine if there was no internal part that needed protection. Then the perception that you have wouldn't need to be there. And all of the things that you're doing to try to preserve would also not be there. There would be nothing to protect or save. So I'll leave it at that. And maybe, bro, we, I don't know if you want to talk about like, how do we actually start to feel that part? Maybe we even take them through like a little bit of an experience and, and feel that part. I yeah. don't know. You want to? Kind of go I'm, definitely, I'm definitely in for an experience. I just want to relay that this has so much to do with, with performance, right? Like we, we think, we think performance is like taking the, like figuring out the right action. Okay. But you know, you tell me, right? Like, uh, I've been saying this a lot, like when I'm in good connection and relation with my spouse, for example, like I do better as a father, I do better in my health. I do better in my business. Like without a doubt, when I'm feeling deeply connected with my wife, I make more money that's just fact right <laughs> so like we often think as performance as like oh just figuring out the right series of things to put in order blah 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 but there's a reason masters are masters like anyone can go play the blues anyone can go figure out how to play a trumpet or a keyboard right and the sequence as it does but like why is it then that like a mozart or a beethoven or you know some other artist that you really enjoy you know you should probably pick somebody that's less than three to 400 years old, um, you know, like that, that you really enjoy. Like why, why, why is it that you like just admire or love them? Like I have this artist that I'm obsessed with. His name is Emmett Fenn and he's just like a fucking magician to me. The way he cultivates different types of genres of music from electronic to literally just sitting down and playing at the piano just blows my mind. Right now I can learn to people play the piano, I'm probably not going to be an Emmett fan. Even though I can learn how to play the sequence just like him, there's something else going on, right? And so where he's probably free and unhindered, I would be really stuck. Like I love singing, but I am one of those people that's like, just don't like to do it in front of people at all. And I took voice lessons and it's something I'm, I've been like working on because it's like, I could feel that it's a deep passion that my body has had in, in my system. And Part of that is like there's an actual collapse that occurs in my nervous system that just literally does not let that happen. Right. I don't I don't like performing in front of people, which is ironic when you've been on stages all over the world talking to people. But like that, that's the case. Like I, we have sat with, you know, people who are CEOs of companies that can speak on a stage in front of 10,000 people. No problem. But you put two people in front of them and ask them a personal question about their lives and they just shrivel. They can't they can't have that conversation. Their system is like Elon saying is like maintaining it's preserving something that doesn't feel safe to do that. And so we want to uh, in a way understand that like our human performance 
our ability to manifest in our reality is completely intertwined with this. Okay. Yeah. And we pretty much say this on, on most calls, but for those of you guys who are new, it's really, it's really valuable to understand that the way that most of us have been trained to try to do some kind of therapy on ourselves is really inept because it discounts. It does not bring in all the other la layers that Elon's kind of pointing to here for all of us which is like, there's more going on than just your thoughts. Your thoughts are, are an indicator of something, but that's like saying my body mass index is the only indicator of my health. Like that, that's a, a ludicrous statement. It's, it's a good indicator. Your weight might be an indicator too, but like, okay, if somebody's 6'4 and weighs 250 pounds, that's really different than someone who's 5'6 that weighs 250 pounds, right? Um, your heart rate variability indicator, your glucose levels, indicator right like all these subtle indicators that your body gives now when you bring them all together it gives you a more holistic picture you can perform better in your health and your energy and your sleep right in all these different areas and your, your nutrition and even then not a perfect science far from right because we can't we can't measure these things moment by moment we're always taking a snapshot in time and difference here though is like you can be aware of your system the subtle energy that's running through it the emotions that are being produced because of it, the thoughts that are coming out of that, as, and then the actions that you're taking out in the world. And to me, like, you know, let's say four le levels that I just mentioned there, like you want to pay attention to all of them, but what's sourcing that, like your, your thoughts, if your so thoughts are really scattered, that might be a, a way to clue you in. Training would be then get out of the thoughts though, let those just run as they do because the system's already in a process. It's already trying to protect. Right. It's trying to get your attention through this, these thought based patterns, forms, whatever. But what's really happening underneath is there is something happening here. OK, then you go down. Oh, well, I've, I'm kind of scared. What am I scared of? Da, 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 right. And this is all reasoning still, but at least you're getting closer to it. And then it's like, where is that located? OK, that's in my solar plexus. That's in my heart behind my heart. And then there's the subtle energy and feeling like a subtle energy that you can become aware of behind it. And to us, at least in our training, that's much closer to the source than anything else. And so you might as well become accustomed to training yourself to go to the source, because if you want to influence the subconscious part of you, and notice I'm not using subconscious mind because we think subconscious mind, like there's a part of the mind that we're not aware of. It, it is mind because everything, all of you from head to toe is mind. Every aspect of your tissue, every cell, every photon, Everything is consciousness. So like really our entire reality is mind, right? The universal God mind, big head, universal consciousness is just mind and things coming into form as a function of that mind. And so we work just the same way. And so we want to get down deep, deep, deep into the system and become really, how do we become aware of that from a compassionate place, from a neutral place? Because what ends up happening for most of us is, okay, fine guy. Yeah, I can notice like uh, my heart hurts a little bit today or my stomach is squenching a little bit today. But right behind that, because of your conditioning, because of all of our conditioning, the next thing that happens is the judgment from the conscious mind about what's happening in the system. And when you do that, you're not meeting your system. You're like, you're, you're almost telling your system, like, I don't like what you're doing. And think about the impact on you you know, in a relationship when a person's like, I don't like what you're doing. You're not like, okay, I'm, I'm open hearted. I'm ready to listen. Tell me, you know, like you're, you, you close up and you're like, oh my God, what did I do? Right. And the system starts going into searching and panicking and like going through history. And like, what did I do the last two days? Did I upset them so much and all this kind of stuff. If that's how it works out, out here, that's how it works in here. And so if you inner judge yourself, the system actually locks up and closes and it's like, Okay, what 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 does he or she want me to do? What, what's happening right now? I'm trying to clear this energy, but they're not happy with that. And and it actually starts creating confusion in the system because we can't accept what's happening. And so awareness is really about creating a view that's outside of the conditioned mind. We call it like in Michael Singer's terminology, he calls it the seat of awareness. And to Elon's point, you know, like when you read uh, Michael Singer's books. A lot of people think that getting in the seat of awareness is like winning the game. Like, okay, good. I'm in the seat of awareness. I'm an aware person now. And it's like, mm -hmm. when you get to the seat of awareness, you just got to the starting line. 
up until now, you've been doing jump ropes in your garage, practicing, just just trying to get strong enough to be able to like run, basically, right? Or like jump a lot, whatever it is. I don't know if that metaphor works for you guys. But like, you know, when you get to the seat of awareness, it's really when the game starts. Yeah. Because now it's developing that awareness to a place where it can fully surrender to the experience of life. And, and, and the view itself becomes the pleasure. You stop seeking pleasure in your experience and what's happening and what you're creating it's like just i am this awareness that has an innate pleasure that is both neutral and compassionate and i'm able to now view my life experience what's happening in my body the energy around me my connections to other from this view of pleasure and and this is where the magic really starts happening and this is what a lot of people honestly most people have never experienced in their lives before okay this is this is like ancient wisdom married with modern neurology that unlocks the potentiality of a human being that makes life so much easier that increases performance to like the nth degree that allows you to have deep meaningful authentic connections with other human beings why because if you're judging yourself in here you're going to judge other people out here the same exact way and so you'll never really find those connections that people are looking for not the like you might get hot on somebody be like this is fun, right? And do all that kind of stuff. But you're like, you're, you're, there's a part of you that's going to crave really authentic, deep connecting with another person. You won't know how to find it. And other people don't either. And so like, how is this taught? And that's why we're going to do a sit now is through gnosis is direct experience. It's the only way to learn it. I don't give a shit. If you read 500 books on what I just said, you won't learn it. You'll have an idea, you'll have a concept of it, but you'll never truly experience it, okay? And and the other part is, is sitting with other people regularly that are doing this kind of work, that are learning how to open their systems, sit in this level of mind and awareness, and and actually uh, we, we call this like co-regulating or co-marinating with another human being because what ends up happening is when you have two energetic bodies around each other that are aware of this work, they start templating each other. It's just like a meshment starts happening of our energy bodies and our awareness begins to teach itself. And that's really the crux of the whole thing is that the only teacher that really matters at the end of the day, like I enjoy books, don't get me wrong. I love audiobooks, I love learning. I love all that stuff. I, you know, I consume of it. I consume quite a bit of it. Nonetheless, what I've learned is like the only truth that I can find really that's true for me is my own awareness and my awareness teaching itself. Okay. And so why don't we do a sit with everybody? Yeah, I just want to <clears throat> let me throw in one other thing here that everyone that's here right now, whether you're listening to this live or whether you're listening to this on a replay, uh, if you're in this group, right? Old souls and seekers. Why do we name it old souls and seekers? Because at the end of the day, we know who you are. You're just like us. You're always seeking. You know that there's something out there, you know that and you're you cannot turn off the part that's always looking. So that also means that your life is going to be in a constant state of expansion. Expansion means that you're going to start to hit on edges that trigger certain aspects of yourself. When they get triggered, do you keep expanding? No. You hit the edge. It hits that part. You try to work through it in your mind, but your body doesn't care and you automatically go into contraction. This is if this is true for relationships. If, if someone shows you too much love that you're not able to receive, you will shut down. If someone offers you more money than you believe you're worthy of, you will shut down. If someone even gives you a compliment that you don't believe, you will shut down. And, and, and it doesn't matter like how much you've read and how much you think like, oh no, I just, I just stay open and I know I can receive this. And the system doesn't care what you what you believe. It has its own feeling that it's experiencing life through. And so knowing that you're going to constantly be in a world of expansion, constantly bumping up against the edges, the question that you may want to ask yourself is like, what tools 
would help me to continuously expand. And so even if the contraction is there, it's not a contraction back to here, right? It might be like hit the edge, little bounce, and then pierce through that and keep expanding. And what you start to create is you start to create new baselines for reality. Like, like a new level of health, a new level of money in your bank account, a new level of how relationships operate. And as that happens, your reality will begin to reflect things newly to you. Always pushing you to the edge, right? Like always willing you here and constantly showing you new and new aspects of yourself to work through and feel through and heal, acknowledge, release, etc. And that's, you know, when we teach people the awareness effect, it's like, it's so simple. The, the practice of it is so simple. The actual sitting and being in the moments is not always so simple because you're touching on things that have been avoided, let's say, for decades. Levels of pain or disappointment or sadness or trauma or terror that have been hidden from you on purpose through a variety of means, whether alcohol, drugs, uh, self-avoidant tactics, like whatever it might be. And that's, you know, when people want to do like real work, I mean, massive enhancements in their performance, whether it's to build a business or to have the relationship of their dreams or in their bodies, right? Like people talk to us all the time. They're like, I tried to lose weight. I tried this. I tried that. I tried this. I tried that. They come and they do our programs and all of a sudden they just start shedding weight. And they're like, I'm not doing anything different. I'm like, yeah, no shit. Just emotional safety. baggage and emotional trauma has to be stored somewhere, somehow. And it doesn't matter how many salads you eat. That shit ain't going away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's really all about creating as much safety as we can in our internal world. You know, like, right, this this anxiety response is, is a response of lack of safety. Like, my body's not feeling safe. And so I, I just go through. And that's the thing. Like, every time something like this happens... It's an opportunity because the system is saying, here, look here. I don't feel safe now. You go through, like Elon said, these very simple processes from the seat of awareness. And ah, the body gets resourced, releases this energy. And this layer that didn't feel safe is you now safe. Like, And it could be one sitting that that never comes back again. Now, of course, I'm going to hit other things in my life that are going to make me feel unsafe. We're going to hit some program or whatever. But it's like, imagine the confidence that every time something arises in your life, you're not like, fuck, you're like, oh, good. All right, I know what to do. You know, like, I know how to look at this awareness, not to frantically try to change my circumstances. Because that's where most of the world is. It's like, I don't like this. Change everything. Yeah. I need safety. And it's like, you have no control over that. And by the way, that's the fiction. That is the matrix. If you want out of the matrix of your mind, you got to learn to train the system that when something's going on that is uncomfortable to turn in, not look out. And so many of us, everyone pretty much is conditioned to look out, change your circumstances, right? So we're going to do a drop in here in just a minute. I do want to give you guys two pieces of information though, before we do, especially if you got to leave. So it's better, you know, now um, we, if you want to learn about this work, like I said, it has to be directly experienced. And so we've, we painstakingly over the last three, four years, especially over the last year, have sat with our entire team and with many of our clients to figure out like, what is it that people need at the beginning? Like what do people actually need to step into? And, and that's why we call these our foundational programs. So we have two foundational experiences that anybody can take. And, and we're, we basically created a system here, guys, that if you can afford about $300, either one time or ongoing monthly for a number of months, or even for an entire year, you can pretty much do every level of, of, the type of work that we offer here, right? So we have whatever you see here and whatever your qualms are about trying to do our type of work, like understand that we are working very diligently to try to make this uh, 
very within reach for most people. We understand there are extenuating circumstances out there, okay? If you want to participate in our work, you want to go to soulsandseekers.com forward slash register, okay? When you go there, you are going to be met with this page right over here that you guys see. Uh, there's a few things. There's a little trailer from one of our live events here. Uh, you can set up these calls if you enjoy them so they're in your calendar. That way um, you have a just calendar invite reminding you. And here are the two experiences that are down here. The first is our intuitive mind two-day online intensive event. This is a training directly with Elon and myself. It goes over weekend, Saturday, Sunday. We The days are about five hours long or so. We try not to take up your entire day. So you should still have a weekend. They are, for lack of a better word, fucking incredible. I'm just going just gonna to tell you straight up. People come to these things and are like, their mind is it's not blown. It's just open. It's expanded. It's heart is connected. Why? Because most people, I mean, I mean, when I say most, I mean like 99.9. I just don't want to put everyone into a category because I don't know what work you've done. Have never, never experienced anything like this before. This is novel in a big, big way. Okay. You can enroll for this on your own. You don't need our permission or application process to do this. And I'm going to tell you, this is February 1st at the recording of this. February 4th, prices go up. So right now we have our introductory price for this event. If you want to get in, go save yourself 50 bucks, get into the Yeah, event. you have basically until Friday. So I would just move on it now because you're going to forget once you hang up and- That's it. Yeah, save yourself open. money and, and, and lock yourself in. You can sit and do the exercise, but like open a tab, you know, go to intuitivemind.live or click on that button and get yourself there. For those of you guys who are like, I'm ready to dive in a little bit more, we have our Mindset and Emotional Intelligence Mastery Level 1 course, okay? This is a six-week program. Incredible recordings on there. I mean, like, each video, you're going to be like, holy shit. This is mega. Big shifts in perception, big shifts in reality. And to us, this is the best value in town, okay? Uh, it also includes a uh, ticket to the live event that I just aforementioned. So it's included in the price. You don't have to pay for it. So as you go through this training, it will culminate with basically you coming to a live event. And so we can not only take you through the foundations of how to shift mindset and do that type of work, but we also start uh, gently coaxing you toward this world of uh, energe uh, energy, performance, healing. Um, and this is where for us, like you can see massive gains, sustained growth, like Veronique said, like she's seeing magic in her life. And what magic means is potential for possibility. That's what it really means, right? Because if when, when, when we are operating from our conditioned mind, we don't have potentials anymore. What we have is what our mind sees, what our mind is locked into, what it likes and what it doesn't like. And anything that doesn't fit into that frame, think about what we've seen over the last two years. That's like a, a very intensified version of it, but that's happening all the time when you're opining with people and you're angry and da, 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 da. That's just all this protection mechanism, right? And it's like, this is my view. This is my lane. Anything outside of that, I don't care about, I'm not interested in. But in the same vein, what that does for you is it completely cuts you off from potential possibility. When the system is open, energy can flow in, resource can come in, reality can shift very, very quickly for people. They start seeing spontaneous things happen in their life and, and honestly, serendipity. It doesn't even make sense how often and how much these things happen. That's when people say like, oh my God, I'm experiencing so much magic in my life. But it's like, you're just not operating from your conditioning. You're much more opened. You know, like this energy, this universal mind is always trying to gift you, always trying to gift you. It's like the only time it's not is because you're closing off the flow for preservation, for these self-sabotaging things. So it's like when these things get removed from the system, the possibilities that can enter your life are like nothing you've ever experienced before. And lastly, but not, but not least, if you're completely clueless about where to start, you just want some guidance, you can use this orange button over here to just book a call with our team. And uh, you can have a chat with them and figure out if, if any of these are a good fit for you. It's a free call. Our coaches are amazing. They're going to help you this way or that way, whether you join a program or not. Okay. So soulsandseekers.com uh, forward slash register. Uh, just so you do know the level one course, you do have to apply for that. Uh, and again, like unless you're, you know, we see they like completely unprepared for that program. We'll let you know, but most people are going to get into that work. Okay. So that's how you do that. Um, if you have any questions about anything that I just said, because I talked really fast or something like that, just just say contact me in the box below or I have a question and somebody from the team will reach out to you and, and support you and help you with that as well. Okay. With that said, 
let's get a, a little taster. Yeah, and you know, again, for the people who've been around the work, let me just put these up here for you guys can see. Like anybody who's done this work will tell you, don't miss, don't miss these experiences. They are life altering in, in ways that you cannot imagine. Wherever you're stuck with right now in your life, it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that. We we have we have worked with people who are literally doing courses from the back of their cars because they're homeless and today are have their dream homes or property owners, like, you know, a few years later and it's just like everything has turned around. Because again, all that is mindset, all that is energy. And and once that changes, there are potentialities in your life that you've never experienced before at every level of reality that just just can't come in until you do this kind of work. Okay. All right, so we'll do a little drop in here with you guys. And that just means we'll do kind of like a, a walk through meditation. And so I'm going to just start you off um, by just asking you to put one of your hands up next to you. It could be your right hand if you want to follow along with me. So you just have your right hand next to you. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to not look at your right hand, but simply become aware of your right hand. So become aware of your right hand. And so just let the awareness linger on the hand. And as you linger on the hand, I'm going to ask you to just notice what is it that you start noticing about your hand. And since you're not in front of me to interact with me, I'll tell you what, what people normally say is that they start feeling warmth, or tingling or cooling, it could be like a tickle or a vibration. And if hopefully it's fair to just say that what we're experiencing by placing our awareness there is increased sensation. That's what I'm, I'm looking for. I'm looking to see if you are experiencing increased sensation by placing awareness on your hand. And if you are, I just want you to note that there is a biological effect happening through your through your directed awareness like you're directing your awareness towards your hand and now we're we're, we're noticing that there's a biological effect okay it's very subtle sometimes not but we're looking for extra sensation just to tell you that this is not a one-off you can put up your other hand your left hand now and now swiftly just bringing awareness over there at the speed of awareness to the other hand and notice that once again, as you begin to rest your awareness or orient your awareness to your left hand, the soon thereafter, you're going to start noticing increased sensation with your left hand. And this is scientifically sound, and you guys have all heard this, where your, en where your awareness goes, energy flows. That is exactly what's happening. Your awareness is a magnet for energy because your awareness is energy. And then this awareness also begins to act like a magnet for blood, because obviously blood is energy as well. And so we might even start feeling more warmth there. We're sending more nutrients to this body part. I, I always give the example of a, a yogi that's consciously healing themselves faster. This is how they're doing it. They're directing their awareness, so they're directing energy. And so they're directing nutrients to that part of the body. And of course, the body will heal faster if you do that. So that's how we can do like spontaneous remissions, all sorts of things like this, right? So here's what we're going to do. Put that arm down. And I'm going to ask you that just the same way you just located your awareness. I'm going to ask you to just find the space around your head. And if you're confused about what that means exactly, you can start by just finding the space in front of your face. Like an inch or two in front of your face. And then if you got that, and finding the space to the right the right hand side of your head, and then behind your head, and then the left side of your head. Almost like we're just moving our awareness away from the conditioned mind and more towards a spacious mind. This is actually a different level of mind. And so just notice as you bring your awareness to the space around the head that there might be an aspect of you that thinks that effort is involved. Like, oh, I have to get my 
awareness out there and just see if you can locate the part that's efforting and then see if you're going to let the effort go. And notice that your awareness doesn't require effort. It's more of a resting into or an orientation to the space. So we're either resting into the space or orienting to the space. Yeah. Whew. And if you're sensitive, because we're all connected in this field now, you can start noticing that the field is changing. And I'll point to it like the quality is like there's less density now there's and spaciousness, right? It's like almost in the word itself. You might start feeling a little bit floaty, maybe more relaxed and rested or resting, a buoyancy perhaps in this quality of, of mind. And I, I, I'm not joking when I say this is an altered state of consciousness than locating your awareness inside the conditioned mind or within the con confines of the conditioned mind. Okay. And so normally we would sit here a lot longer and explore the different qualities. We would toggle back and forth to really feel the nuances. And this is how we begin to learn about our awareness through direct gnosis experience is by contrast because humans learn through contrast. Okay. So now, again, somehow, some way, just trusting your system, trusting that you have an intelligence. This is innate. You don't need actual instruction. I'm going to ask you to just bring your awareness towards your heart. So everyone bringing your awareness towards your heart and see if you can maintain this spacious view at the same time. Like, don't collapse back into your conditioned mind. If there's some toggling that's happened, that's totally fine. You can let the toggle happen. You don't have to effort here. You don't have to make anything happen. Or just in exploration. And again, just noticing subtle changes as you bring awareness to the heart. Maybe the heart feels closed, worried, scared, tense. Maybe it feels wide open, loving, connected, compassionate. Wherever you are, is just that's just where you are. That's where your innate intelligence is right now. And then again, noticing if there's any subtle changes that you can notice as we bring our awareness to the heart space. The heart is known for its very dynamic energy, the only energy center that has both masculine and feminine attributes, often referred to as a, like a, a fiery center, but that's really just meaning dynamic motion, energy in motion. There's some other energy centers that are much more static. This is almost like the bridge between the lower and upper chakras. A lot of dynamism, just like fire moving around and helping other elements move around as well. And then bringing the awareness down to the, towards the lower belly now, lower Dantian. Maybe you could even check in your solar plexus right before you go down, see if, how that feels. Maybe it's tight. It feels like it's tight in this group. And as you settle in the belly, again, noticing if there's any qualitative shifts, even if they're very subtle. You might notice a as if time feels much slower coming from the heart and dropping down towards the belly. You may feel more connection in the system to myself or others in this group right now as you find this space. Again, you might notice that the stomach feels tight, maybe on one side or all of it. Maybe on top or the bottom, maybe the inside, or maybe it feels very relaxed. And just noticing these little subtle layers. And so in the interest of time, so why is this useful? You know, how is this really useful? And you can keep your eyes closed while I give you this, because 
ultimately, like Elon said, we have a energetic system here that's going into preservation mode. And so there's a certain way that your body responds energetically, biologically, physiologically to stimulus within you. You think you're you think you are, are responding to your environment, but it's really just these parts within you that are like knee-jerk reactions that are happening all the time. And so when we bring awareness to these parts, specifically when they're activated. It is very much like bringing awareness to an upset child. The child needs the adult nervous system to template safety, to template connection, to template love, right? All these really extremely important biological necessities for a human being. That's why the child comes running to the mom or the dad with its hands raised up. It's not saying fix my problems. It's saying... I need to soothe my nervous system. Can I borrow yours for a moment? And so right now we're using the consciousness of the mind and our awareness mind to come view parts, which are really parts of us stuck in time. They're like very young parts that had trauma. And in the same way that a child gets soothing from a parent or an adult, you can meet your adult self and the traumatized child self and soothe this aspect of you simply by becoming aware of it from a neutral and compassionate mind, just like you would for a child. The moment you try to fix it, the child feels that and it fights back. And so your body has this intelligent design of self-healing, just like it has of self-preservation. And when you sit like this, especially with people who have done this work for quite some time and their fields are uh, much more adapted, have been experienced, experienced a lot within their own systems, you can actually start templating from group fields, from uh, a field with another person. And this is where healing happens because healing takes three levels. It's self to self, self to other and self to group. And so everything that we do here in our programs is designed to give you gnosis experience at every level so that the parts within you, these little traumatized parts, get the medicine that they're looking for, which is really another way of saying the experience and information that they needed to get in order to mature and evolve beyond where they got stuck. And that's what all of us are really looking for. And as we do this, we naturally introduce more safety to our nervous system and we need less and less impediment from the mind to come in to try to create that safety. We just are safe. We are walking through the world safe. And so our reality, our relationships, our business, our health, everything reflects that safety. And so hopefully you guys got a little bit of a taster of what it can be like to shift from ordinary mind into a spacious mind. And there's many, many levels of mind beyond that. That's a way of many levels of programs, because as you find these seats, you start going into higher states and uh, more energy rich states of consciousness. You learn how to resource your system with the help of other people. You learn how to navigate your inner world. And this over time, because it's not an overnight phenomenon, you habituated these identities into you. You're going to find that it's going to take practice on the way out as well. And that's why it's important to understand not just, hey, okay, I get it. I did a weekend program. It's like, if I just sit five minutes every day and cultivate this new reality into my system, what becomes possible when I no longer have to operate from threat and survival and I'm feeling peaceful? and connected, what would I do in my business? What would I do with my health? If I wasn't reaching for that food, if I wasn't watching the television, if I wasn't addicted to the social media or the drugs or the substances or whatever it might be, because not because it's wrong, but because that's what the system is reaching for, trying to soothe itself in an attempt to preserve itself, but in fact, it's harming itself. And that's what we want to get super related to. So again, guys, if you are interested and like really exploring, inquiring, finding out what this world can work can provide you. 
Again, I want to remind you, our event tickets are on sale right now until the 4th. Go to soulsandseekers.com forward slash register. You'll find that on the left-hand side of the page right there, or if you're on mobile, just keep, keep scrolling. And then again, like I said, best value is jumping into the six-week program right here, grabbing your uh, bonus ticket, and then our event is uh, March 5th and 6th. So pretty much at the start of next month, you get to roll right from your program into this program and see what this uh, this whole game is really, really about. All right, friends. Hope you enjoyed today's session and the conversation. Hope it pointed you in the in a good direction in terms of what you can do with your self-care. Um, we love you, love you, love you so much. Thank you for your awareness and attention. Again, if you're enjoying these trainings, you know, spread the word. Uh, friends, families, whatever that might get value from this as well, or just bring them to that link and say, hey, I think you'd really enjoy this. Check that out. Again, we love you. Thank you for your attention, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Yeah.